of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. While much of the East Coast is still struggling to recover from the massive blizzard that slammed into hundreds of cities and towns from the Carolinas to Maine the day after Christmas, six states — Massachusetts, Maine, Maryland, New Jersey, North Carolina and Virginia — declared states of emergency. The storm buried cities in more than two feet of snow and unleashed winds of up to 80 miles per hour. Thousands of passengers have been stranded during the busy holiday season, with thousands of flights as well as train and bus routes canceled. It was a grimly fitting end to 2010, which was characterized by extreme weather from start to finish, with earthquakes, heat waves, floods, volcanoes, super typhoons, blizzards, landslides and droughts. In Pakistan, massive flooding submerged one-fifth of the country underwater. In Russia, a record heat wave sparked wildfires that left 15,000 people dead. In Niger, first a severe drought threatened widespread famine, then floods left more than 100,000 people homeless. In Europe, heavy snow and blizzards threw air traffic into turmoil. Deadly floods and mudslides killed thousands in China, India, Venezuela, Indonesia and many other countries. Meanwhile, preliminary data show that 18 countries broke their records for the hottest day ever. In fact, 2010 may go down as the hottest on record worldwide. This, according to the World Meteorological Organization. While TV networks blare the two words extreme weather, what about another two? Global warming. Dr. Paul Epstein is associate director of the Center for Health and the Global Environment at Harvard Medical School. He's co-author of the forthcoming book, Changing Planet, Changing Health, How the Climate Crisis Threatens Our Health and What We Can Do About It. He's joining us via Democracy Now! video stream from his home in Brookline, Massachusetts. Dr. Epstein, welcome to Democracy Now! Let's uh, get an assessment from you. Um, one article said, um, bundle up. It's global warming. Relate the two, the freezing weather to global warming. Good. Well, good morning, Amy. Good to be with you. Yes, uh, we are certainly in a spate of extreme weather events, and it seems that this year has been a real uptick in all sorts of events, from heavy rains to droughts to heat waves and now cold weather. And I think if we think back at last winter, we also had a very a very uh, intense winter with three large snowstorms together. And now we're seeing this heavy this heavy snowfall in the United States, but also the last several months in Europe, as you recall here. The underlying issue between global warming and climate change, meaning warming and changes in weather patterns, is that in the last 50 years, the oceans have absorbed 22 times as much heat as has the atmosphere. I'm going to repeat that because it's not often considered as part of the global warming story, but the heat of the last half century has built up in the oceans, and it's the accelerated evaporation off of warm oceans that drives the heavy rains. A warmer atmosphere also holds more water vapor. For each one degree centigrade it heats up, it holds seven more, seven percent more water vapor. So there's a push and a pull on the whole water cycle. And the key here is that global warming in the atmosphere through the ocean engine is now changing the weather patterns, and it's the hydrological cycle, the Earth's water cycle, that's been dramatically changed, with more droughts in some areas and more intense rains in others, and now intense snows. We are getting tremendous wall-to-wall, 24-hour-a-day -wall, coverage of weather. In fact, we got an email from a friend. The subject said, news, with a question mark. And then it said, um, uh, questioning why we were covering weather, saying, what's next, traffic and sports? But the weather is news. If the newscasters on television took it on uh, by talking about the issue of global warming, you know, what people can do about this, 
I want to go to the issue of how it's covered in the media. Dr. Paul Epstein, start off by talking about um, this issue. Um, a study from George Mason University conducted in March reports that just 54 percent of U.S. weathercasters accept that climate change is happening, and that fewer than a third believe that climate change was caused mostly by human activities. TV forecasters aren't required to have any formal training in climate change to receive certification by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. One weather forecaster who appears regularly on many news outlets and has been quoted in the mainstream press is AccuWeather's expert senior meteorologist uh, Joe Bastardi. Uh, he's regularly questioned the science of global warming. This is a clip um, of Joe Bastardi from last week on the Fox Business Network. Well, look, I want to show you something. It's something you good folks at Fox allowed me to put on, because you're fair and balanced, a few years ago about what, why we have to start looking for more and more. This is called the triple crown of cooling, the natural reversal of the ocean cycles. Three years ago, the Pacific went from its warm state into its cold state. Solar activity, very low sunspot activity, and volcanic activity, not the kind you see in the tropics, but the kind we had up in the Arctic regions a couple of winters ago. And this is, this is something that we uh, opine could be causing a return to, for instance, the times of the Victorian era in Europe, where they used to have ice fairs around in the early 1800s, around Christmas time on the Thames. Are, and you're seeing that type of thing go on. Are you saying that we are in a period of global cooling? Well, I've been saying that what I believe is going on is that this is a big debate between the natural cycles and the forces of the, from AGW. And by the way, these folks that are now claiming that global warming is causing all the severe cold, that's like the kid on the playground that doesn't get his way and takes his ball home. The fact of the matter is that the, the forecast was made by this forecaster three years ago that we're going to start seeing these things because of this, and it opens up the big debate. Are the natural cycles taking over, and are we going to see cooling over the next 20 to 30 years? What I'm saying to you, Brian, is this is predictable if you study cycles, study climatology, then throw the computer Joe. in and don't just say, well, everything's global warming. That was AccuWeather's expert senior meteorolo meteorologist Joe Bastardi. Uh, Dr. Paul Epstein, your response. Sure. Well, just and that was an interesting tape uh, and an interesting analysis because he's trying to get at the dynamics that are driving the current weather. Uh, so before we get to the media, just for a moment, it, it's, it's important that we do try to analyze what are the dynamics behind the current weather we're seeing. And in fact, in the North Atlantic, we've seen so much ice melt off of Greenland and in the Arctic Sea that it creates a cold sheen across the ocean, the North Atlantic, and that sets up a high pressure system. Hot air rises, creating lows, and cold air sinks, creating highs. And it's that North Atlantic high that's actually persisted for the last 15 months, one of the longest periods on record, due to the ice melt, we can presume, that is driving these high winds, cold weather, shooting across Europe down to the low pressure system that's over Middle East because they've had so much heat. So in fact, it's, it's, it is essential to think about what are the changes in the ocean and in the ice cover. Those are the lead, they're playing leading roles that are driving today's weather patterns. What we see, we used to say no one event is diagnostic of global warming. In fact, climate is changing. Climate has changed, meaning weather patterns have changed. And so everything we're seeing is due to natural variability and climate change. It's a function of both of those interacting. And we can no longer just pass this off and say, is this event global warming? Is that we are in the midst of climate change, and it affects all of our weather patterns, again, primarily through the oceans and ice cover. Now, the media has done a real up and down job on this whole issue, but the connection between warming and warming of the oceans and the extreme weather events that are have become much more common is something that the media has been 
spotty, slow to pick up, and one wonders where the agenda for that kind of ignoring a, a pattern that's emerging and something in the scientific literature that's now well accepted. Uh, even up to a year, a year and a half ago, this was not so, there were many questions in the scientific li literature about the connections. And now it's well accepted, and all of the modeling studies show that this is, we're going to see more extreme weather events and more intense outliers. But it's not just the models, it's the data and the first principles. Those are the three parts of science, the models, the data, the first principles. And the first principles are that greenhouse gases trap heat in the atmosphere. The data shows us the oceans are warming. And the data is now very clear that we're seeing heavier rain events and more droughts. Over the U.S., for example, since 1970, rains have gone up a little bit, like 7 percent. But the two inches, of day, two inches a day rains have gone up 14 percent. Four inches a day rains have gone up 20 percent. And six inches a day rains have gone up 27 percent. A whole shift in the in the whole pattern of extreme events, a shift, the bell-shaped curve, if you picture the normal distribution of events from warm to cold to dry to hot, the whole curve is changing shape as we, as the earth gets warmer. And some, and we're seeing more extremes of both ends, hotter days as well as colder periods, more rain in some areas, more drought in others, and it's a whole pattern where the curve is kind of caving in on itself, fewer normal days, and much more in the extremes. This is what we call now climate instability. Climate instability meaning that rates of change in the ice are accelerating, wider swings from one extreme to the other, more chance of major outliers like the heat wave in Russia, the floods in Pakistan, these storms now. This is all part of a changing climate, and global warming is the word that, the two words that kind of throw us. The real issue is climate change, climate instability, and